and heavenly father we thank you father we're looking back for all you've done this year and we can boldly say we are the people the lord has helped we are the people the lord has showed mercy father we're grateful grateful for every single thing you've done oh lord we're grateful thank you holy father in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Once again, welcome to church. Welcome to this great service. Praise God. Right. Let's get to the word of God today. Let's do this. Let's do this. So today, I want to teach about dealing with discouragement. So everyone that feels discouraged about 2023, you came for the right service. If you feel discouraged about, you know, 2023... If you feel discouraged about 2023, <laughs> discouraged about this year, you feel discouraged about your marriage, you feel discouraged about your job, you feel very discouraged, this is welcome. This is really, really welcome. This service will really speak to you. It will help you to identify what is discouraging you and will help you to do something about what is also discouraging you. Are you blessed today? Oh, that's so weak. Are you blessed it? Lady in glasses, I like your glasses. Oh, that's really good. Have they seen it? Camera, come and capture this lady for me. I love her glasses. Look towards the camera. Look towards the camera. Say hi. <laughs> Praise God. I really like her glasses. Praise God. All right. So, dealing with discouragement. Okay. So, Normally, at this season of the year, a lot of people fall into discouragement. A lot of people. And the reason why is that people are evaluating their life. So, they're going like, they're looking at how the year has been. They're looking at how their relationship has been. Some of you had said that 2023 is my year of marriage. So, this 2023, 2022 going, and you're like, oh, wow. I didn't have a boyfriend or so married. And you're feeling down about it. Some people are looking at their finances and they say that, oh, I thought I would have bought my own house now. Or I'm moving to a house right now. Some people had seen themselves in Canada by now. And yet they are still in Niger. Praise God. You know, so a lot of people will begin to review what it looks like. And when you review what it looks like, the tendency for you to be discouraged is very high. And that's what we're talking about this topic today. And I want to tell you why I'm talking about this. Because... The challenge with discouragement is that once your soul is discouraged, you're going to enter into 2023, which is few days away, with a depressed heart, rather with a hopeful spirit. And once you enter with a depressed heart, guess what's going to happen to you? It will be a bad year for you because you started out bad. So we want to make sure that we can throw away that spirit of discouragement and depression and set you up for success in the year ahead. Some people are so discouraged that if you told them things like, um, we're fasting and praying for next day, like fasting and praying for next day, I don't want to fast and pray. If God wants to do it, let him do it. If not do it, let him do it. I'm okay. All the fasting and praying I've been doing, if you cannot use it for now, I'm okay. And, and the reason they say that is because genuinely they are what? Very, very what? Discouraged. So let's turn in our scripture. Exodus chapter 6 verse 9. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Exodus chapter 6 verse 9. Exodus chapter 6 verse 9. See what the Bible says. And, and this is why you must deal with discouragement. Exodus chapter 6 verse 9. The Bible says, so Moses told the people of Israel what God had said. And listen to this. Let's read the next line. But what? But what? The Bible says, but they refused to listen. They had become what? Exactly. The Bible says, they refused to listen and they had become extremely discouraged because of the brutality of their slavery. Did you see what discouragement does? People can become so discouraged they will refuse to hear God. And I'm saying so to you because once you become discouraged, some things that is meant to help you, you can begin to walk against it. I know people and everyone will know someone here that has become so discouraged and they stop coming to church. Yes or no? Someone knows someone that has become so discouraged they stop praying. So the Bible says that Moses was so discouraged, I'm sorry, Israel was so discouraged, they stopped listening to God. And maybe you're here, and that's your situation. Maybe you're so, you're so, you are so discouraged that you've stopped listening to God. 
Maybe you're so discouraged because you're discouraged about your finances. You're discouraged about your marital status. You're discouraged about your business because you thought you would do certain numbers this year. And you didn't even get to half of it. You're discouraged about your career. You're discouraged about your migration. You thought that maybe I was going to migrate to another country. And you're so discouraged that you, you don't want to pray. Listen, this is what it does. The Bible says the children of Israel were so discouraged that they refused to listen to God. But that's not where you want to be. The reason is this. Once you get that discouraged, I want to notice this, you're just going to go down. So, one of the reasons you must overcome discouragement is this. Discouragement is going to lead to depression. Many people are here. They are so discouraged about love and relationships. They don't want to fall in love again. And yet, what they pray for the most is a marriage. Some people are so discouraged about their Christian life. And they say, I've been trying to overcome pornography. I've been trying to overcome addiction. And so, don't discourage that after all these years, I'm still addicted to it. And they say that, and this is the next thing. They become too discouraged, they stop, they, they stop trying. So, why should you deal with discouragement, number one? You can get so discouraged that you stop trying. And stop, when you stop trying, it eventually leads to failure. Failure. You don't want to be that way. Don't get so discouraged that you stop trying. Many of you are doing businesses here and you get so discouraged and you just stop trying. Maybe you've been to a roller coaster in relationships and you get so discouraged, you just stop trying. The second thing is this. Why must you be discouragement? Because if you stop trying, you eventually fail and you have unfinished assignment. The second thing why you must be discouragement is this. Discouragement leads to depression. And the third reason why just deal with discouragement is this. Discouragement will make you stop hearing God. Because there's no point again. There's no point. You're so, you're so discouraged. There's just no point again. Let's turn to 1 Kings chapter 19. Am I speaking to someone today? Yes, glory to God. I said glory to God. This comment will make you stop trying. And, and, and you know, some of you, you've stopped working on the marriage because you're discouraged. Some of you have stopped working on your health because you're discouraged. How many of you have tried to lose weight before and you got discouraged? And you've stopped. Not that you just uh, you stop because you got discouraged. Guess what? Those who saw result eventually, those that continued, even though they were what discouraged. Let me ask a simple question, and I'm going to ask my my assistant to help with the microphone. You know, how many of you have? How many of you are here? You got you stopped discouraged. You got discouraged, and you stopped doing something. I want to share me a story. You got discouraged, and you stopped doing something. Will you please share a story? Wow, I have two two ladies here, just like. I don't know why. Okay, let's start from the front here. Yeah. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, so in my business, I wasn't getting clients a lot this year. And I used to pay for ads and do certain things. But because it wasn't for coming, I just stopped. And that led to even greater like loss. I, I love that. Watch this now. Because she got discouraged, what she should be doing, she stopped doing it. Guess what happened? Even the loss, even where she thought she was, what happened? She go down. And that's why I said discouragement will lead to further loss and failure. Wow. Have you changed now? Or are you going to change from today? I have started. You've so started. I know that I'm going to change. But you're going to move forward. Today. That's yeah. really good. Thank you. God bless you. There's a lady that raised up the hand in the middle. Yeah. Can you give the lady... One of the ladies there will just take one. Since there are two of you, you decide who is going to speak. Yeah. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, for me, um, last year I did uh, surgery. You did but, surgery? Uh, yeah. So four, four months later, I did another one, intestinal obstruction. And um, I was getting better, but all of a sudden it just went back. And I was ill, really ill for three months, more than... Wow. But then again, God healed me because it got bad. I couldn't eat. Wow. I wasn't eating. I go days, like three days, two days without food and water. I would just be there. But God healed me. I started eating. I got better. And then I went for checkup again. 
because the surgery I did last year was fibro surgery. So I went for checkup again after I was getting better, and then I discovered that okay, this time when I went for the scan, I just saw the face of the lady, and she was like, "Oh, you have white ovarian cyst and um, fibro ceiling." So when I got the results, I went home, and everyone was asking like, "And that's hey, another surgery, right?" No, no, no. Like after two surgeries, yeah. and I was getting better, and then I went for checkup. And they saw like, something else. Yes, right ovarian cyst, and then um, five seedlings. So when I got to my auntie, my mom, they had like, "Are you okay? Like, what's?" The way? I said, "Everything is fine." I just said everything. So I just went inside the house. I locked myself. I'm like, "God, I thought you said affliction will not rise the second time. What was all this?" I pray every day. In fact, uh, during the period I was sick, I was always praying, joining next level. I read my Bible. I try to get closer to God. And so what then, has happened now? Well, I just want to thank God because, truthfully, I stopped. After that, reason, I'm like, all this prayer, all this, why nothing happened? Which one is this? So I just told myself, like, well, if I have the power to pray, I'll pray. If I cannot pray, anything, God, man, Jesus. I just left it like that. <laughs> thank you for being honest. Thank so, you, God. So um, recently, um, last week, um, Sunday, like Thanksgiving Sunday, and I was just hearing different testimony. And I remember that, okay, I did that surgery and I suffered because it was a 50-50 surgery. I know what I went through. Wow. You know, so, and when God healed me, I'm like, ah. I remember how I asked God to heal me because I wasn't eating. And I told God, God, please restore my appetite. Let me get better. And he did it on that five days. Wow. Me, I, as in, I was the, 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 So the, 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 I just the, remembered the, the, all that. I'm like, that same God. What am do I even now. doing? So I'm like, oh. He will do fact. it now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, I won't take someone else. I won't take someone else. Amen. I won't take someone, someone else. Yeah. I'll, maybe someone at the back. Someone at the back. We have a lot of people from the front. And I, I love her honesty. She just said, like, Father, I'm tired. And that's it. Yeah, how did you deal, what, what discouraged and how did you deal with it? Yes, yes. Yes, go ahead, Andre. Hi, uh, um, my name is Harrison. Good morning. I'm looking for you, Harrison. Such a great <laughs> voice. <laughs> um, I'm an IT specialist. I'm planning to move to cyber security. So I wrote my exam, CISSB, and I failed it once. I've never failed an exam in a very long time. Because you're time. meant to be a preacher. Your voice, <laughs> your voice. <laughs> you have a preacher's so voice. I, so I've never failed an exam in a very long time. And I failed that exam. I was so surprised. And after three weeks, I had to read again to write the exam. And guess what? I failed again. <laughs> so I just thought maybe that's not the way for me and any time I see anything relating to cyber security I just close it I don't want to look at it anymore because I failed the exam twice um, so that made me just a little bit depressed because I'm feeling something you read for over Four months, it's really depressing. You, you so, know, ha ha Harris. So. Harrison or Harris? Which, what's your name? Harrison. Harrison. This is a problem of that succeed. You don't know that two failures is nothing. <laughs> if not, I'm talking about raise up your hands. <laughs> Some of us will jump seven times. <laughs> I'm telling you, because once you succeed too much, it can come back at you. You get so unused to failure. Now, once you fail at something, you think, I mean, what is not? Like, I mean, this is my counsel to you. The first thing is that if you have a strong why to do what you want to do, then go for it again. When you failed the first time, what did you learn, Harrison? Why is it? That was so difficult. But you learned that. No, that's yeah. not something you learned. That's what you observed. Okay. <laughs> what did you learn? So maybe that's why you are still failing. <laughs> the reason why is that the way you're going to get every other failure is that it's going to teach you something. So once it teaches you something, you can go back and do it again. Maybe you should reflect on what you learned and say, okay, I learned that the exams are this way, they ask questions this way, I didn't know this way, I didn't know that way, I didn't know this and this and this. I'm able to help you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank All you right. very much.
But I wanted to show you something. How people get so discouraged. I want to, that's what I'm going to. See how they all get discouraged. They, they get so discouraged. I want to show you something. They get so discouraged that they can do anything else. That's how they get discouraged. So discouraged. They can't do anything else. See, if you allow discouragement to take over your soul. And I want to show you. Bring my water now. You have my water? Yeah. This is clean water. Yeah. Pastor George, come and have some. This clean water. Drink. Okay, before you drink, hold on. Give me back the glass. This is what this judgment looks like. Watch this. Just watch me. Just one strand. Drink. See, this what is coming out is just one little poison, but the whole soul is contaminated. Just it's just one strand of hair. Why should I say that? Let me remove the strand of hair. The whole water is contaminated because now we have a strand of hair inside the water. This is why you must get rid of discouragement. I, I, I know that. So you look at yourself, you're discouraged about your family because it's not where you think it should be. You discovered discouraged about your marital state because you thought you have moved from maybe single to engage and engage to marry, and yet now you are very single. You are discouraged about your finances because you thought that this person has cut with you have moved from quarter to you know at least tenant. You have the right to be discouraged, but the thing is this: if you allow discouragement comes into you, it's if this but this cup is your soul, it will pollute everything. It will pollute everything. It will get you to the point where you even stop trying. Let's go back to the scripture I read before. Exodus chapter 6 verse 9. Look at it. Thank you very much, two of you. Thank you. Exodus chapter 6 verse 9. Let, let's see what this commandment does. And, and the reason I'm here is that, you know, there are ladies here and guys here that are not dating because they're discouraged about dating. Not because nobody likes them. Yes or no? Where are you? Raise up your hands. Be honest in Jesus' name. Yeah. Give this guy the microphone. This guy. Yeah, give him the microphone. Give him the microphone. Yeah. I love the fact that you're honest. I love you. Even your cap makes you stand up. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, I've tried um, relationship before and it feels... Could you hold the microphone closer here? Okay. I'm camera shy. No, I know you're shy. Just take the microphone and put it close to your mouth. Okay, then look um, at me. Just look at me. Forget everything. Yeah. All right, I've tried a um, relationship before and um, it failed and um, uh, because I put so much effort in it uh, and after then I've seen people that are really genuine like me and um, I got scared at the point. A lady told me she likes me and um, I blocked her immediately because I was scared. Yeah, wow. And, um, because I, was, I feel like nobody can genuinely like me if... Somebody I really liked so much really ended after three years. So I just felt like... Because you felt as if someone that you really liked ended the relationship after three years yeah. and went up with somebody else, right? Yeah, I just decided to just put more attention to my career instead. That's it. And, and, thank you. And, and you know why I asked him? Because it's a normal story for the girls. But you never know that there are also men that struggle with this kind of thing. And look at this. Now, this guy is here. There's a lady that genuinely likes him. And as soon as the lady said, I like you, the response is, block her. And the reason why, you, you can laugh at him, but his heart has been affected. And is now very discouraged. Thank you for sharing, my brother. I, I want to read this again. Read, read, read this again. The Bible says, Moses told the people of Israel what the Lord had said. And watch this. They, they refused to listen. This is, this is why your friends don't pray again. This is why they don't come to church again. Because why did they refuse to listen? Because they became too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. So the reason why people don't hear God and say, I'm going to pray, I'm going to go to church, is because they are too discouraged. And this why I don't want to be discouraged. You know why? Because when you're discouraged, the very thing that should help you, you throw it away. The very thing that will bring about transformation, you push away. And the reason why is that because deep down within your soul, you're very discouraged. And, and the truth is that I understand you had a divorce, and that's tough. I understand you lost 
a hundred million in business that's tough but pastor george is over there <laughs> one guy did investment and he took away from you and the company like how much one billion a billionaire and left them a billionaire hole in business and i asked him i said how are you doing he said, i can't sleep he said these are people's money but listen to me people become discouraged and they stop trying if you get into a hole the way to come out is to dig it out the reason i'm saying this is that and this is what i'm saying i want you to know why i'm saying this all of you that are watching online on site overflow whatever you're watching from is that i do not want you to enter 2023 negative that's where i'm going to because you just when they say dream for next year pray for next year, write down your goals say, what, what goals is it the ones i wrote down before sometimes you have the courage you write them again and say i will believe again i, I will believe again the only people that eventually have a testimony are those that got this courage got up and kept moving someone say hallelujah Someone say hallelujah. So why am I teaching on this first Kings chapter 6, chapter 19? You know in the Bible, in the Old Testament, there were two most significant prophets in the Old Testament when you read, when you read in terms of all the things they did. Some will argue that David is one of them. I totally agree. But it, when the Bible speaks about the law and the, prof, the prophet, it speaks about Moses and Elijah. And, and when you hear the name, in fact, when I hear someone call his name Elijah, I never think of someone like me. I think someone that is tall, has a strong voice like Harrison, and says, Shaba! You know, that, that's how I think, like a prophet Elijah. Shaka! Hey, hey! You know, that's how I think about prophet Elijah. Because I believe he was a tough, strong person. I don't think he was someone like quiet like me, meek like me, tiny like me. No, no, no. That's not Elijah. He has to be someone like prophet told me the huge, have a magnificent presence. And the Bible makes us know. I said two significant prophets, Moses and Elijah. Guess what? The two of them got discouraged and the two of them did not finish their assignments. Moses did not enter the promised land. So had to continue from where Elijah stopped. God, God just told Elijah, just come, just come. It was enough. It was tired. And that was the end. Let's read about Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 19. And the reason I'm saying so is that I wanted to finish your assignment. That assignment in entertainment industry, that assignment in your in real estate, I don't want you to abandon it halfway. I want to finish it. But if you have a discouragement, you will stop yourself. You will stop trying. You will stop pushing. 1 Kings chapter 19. And, and I'm going to talk to you about... What to do when you're discouraged and when it comes. How it's going to come and what to do. First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. I, I don't know who is discouraged about that marriage here. And the Spirit of God is saying to you, just a little more push. I don't know who is discouraged about your health condition. You've been going to the hospital to treat PCOS, treat fiber, and it's getting tiring. And just push a little more. I don't know who is discouraged about 2022. Because it's not gone the way you are, you want. But push a little more. At the scale of things, you're going to look back one day and say, wow, it's all added up somewhere. Glory to God. Glory to God. First Kings chapter 19. Oh, this is good. First Kings chapter 19. Let's start from verse 2. First Kings chapter 19, verse 2. The Bible says this. <laughs> this was the story of Elijah. Elijah, the mount. The, see, I want you to notice how Elijah's life was. Just before now, you know, um, what they call it. Elijah is the person that raven, raven fed. You know, miracles, big things that happened in his life. And verse 2 says this. The Bible says, Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do unto me, and more also, if I make not the life as one of them by tomorrow. He received a direct threat. And this is one of the reasons why people get discouraged. What's one of the reasons? Number one, because of others' opinion and evil reports. Why do people get discouraged? Because of others' opinion and evil reports. And take the microphone and give it to her. She has an answer for me. Yeah. Tell me why you looked at her. Yeah. I'm in front here. I see everything. Give it to the lady in pink. As soon as I said so, she looked at her. Tell me the story. Okay. So, she's my friend. Uh-huh. And um, 
she got discouraged because um, a lady said something to her. What it is, let it say. Uh, you know, you guys should marry early and all that. And he really brought her down. And I was like... She, she, was she crying? She was, she was sad. She was really sad. Extremely sad. Give it to her, the microphone. Yeah. So who said this to you? A lady in my office. No, just, a lady in my office. Yeah. So tell me how the conversation went. She was like, oh, you're so pretty. Why are you not married? Um, at 22, you know, if you have a child at 22... She said you should what? If you have, if you had married when you were 22... Yeah. Your child would be like you, but you're almost... You're, you're not 30, but I mean, you'll still be 30 and you're not married. When would you give birth? You know, stuff like that. And how did that make you feel? Honestly, I'm not... I want to hold the microphone closer because I can hear you. Okay, so honestly, I'm not... I'm not crazy about it. I feel like... God has a plan. But how did what she said make you feel? It got to me because I said, thinking back, okay, if I, when I was 22, did I meet anyone that was that serious? Or do I have a problem? Or, you know? See, the thing about other people's comment is this. Initially, when life happens, you think it's life. When people talk, you think you're the problem. So you think, oh, that's life. Then when they talk, that's the problem. The question is this. Some of you don't have a problem until someone says it. And the truth is this. Most people that say it say it out of love, or they don't, although they don't know it hurts so bad. And the reason why it hurts so bad is that you have a connection to them. If it was an absolute stranger that said so, you don't even care. And, and look at Elijah. Elijah is a mighty prophet of God. And he just looks and said, and Elijah just said, by this time tomorrow, if you are not dead. Are you in this place and other people's opinion is bringing about discouragement to you? And if it is, I have some. So it says, well, they said this. Lady, I will tell you what to say. When they say so, that's their opinion. But there's another person that has an opinion and that's God. And guess what? God's opinion is superior to every other person's opinion. And what does God say? Ezekiel, sorry, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. You know what that scripture says? It says, in his time, he makes all things beautiful. And I love what you said. He has a plan. So when someone says, why are you not married? Because I believe in his time, he makes all things beautiful. You're going to get reports. Report like you can have a child. You're going to get a report that all your money in FTX, in crypto, is gone. And you're going to remember, George chapter 2, that the years that the locust and caterpillar are stolen, he will restore everything again. So, one report talks about loss, and the report talks about restoration. One report talks about delay, and the report talks about appointment. One report talks about sorrow, and the report talks about joy. One report talks that things is over, and you will tell them, the Bible says, he weeping me and jail for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, my God. Elijah heard from Jezebel and said this. The question is this. What are other people saying that's making you so depressed? Someone said you're not amount to anything. But that's not what God said. God said about you that you, your beginning will be small. Your latter will be extremely great. The second, the second thing I want to level, so I wanted to see. So the first thing is this about Elijah. Number one, how did, how did this discouragement come from what somebody else said how do you fix it by paying attention to what what god said the second thing is this the second thing is this how does verse three see what see what it says the bible says and as soon as he saw that that that, that scripture shocked me you know why because <laughs> jezebel did not show him anything jezebel only spoke to him but he saw it he saw it shows that his depression came from his perspective because it was, his, it was his perspective that he saw something. So the question is this. What perspective does God need to change in your life? Bible says, as soon as he saw that, to defeat discouragement, you have to change what you think. Some of you are very 
discouraged that your husband is very busy, but he's a great provider. Why not thank him and say, okay, Father, thank you because I have a husband that is providing. You know why? There are people that their husband is not busy, but they cannot provide. And there are people that their husband is busy and they still don't provide. At least he's 50%. Let's stay with that. Some of you, your husband can't provide, but he's very supportive. How do you see? Do you see it as a curse or a blessing? It's like, it's like, it's, it's like, it's a, it's a glass cup. Is it half full or half empty? When Jezebel threatened Ahab, and when Jezebel threatened Elijah, you know, if I didn't know the story and I heard about Elijah, my perspective would be like, if I was there, I would have said, hey, Lord of the Rings, fire, 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 fire. Because I would have thought that based on the pedigree of Elijah, he would have literally said, fire. It would have been a, an occasion to demonstrate power. But that's not what I saw. Question is this. What is discouraging you? Other people's opinion? The way you're thinking about it? The third thing that discourages people is this. I want to read verse 4. Let's go. The Bible says this. He himself went to this journey to the wilderness, came and sat under the juniper tree and requested for himself that he may die. And he said, let's read together. It is what? Let's read together. I want to go. Continue. Now, hold on. Let's read together. I want to go. Hold on. Let's read together. I want to go. Hold on. Let all of us read together. You know, are you discouraged? Can we all read together? If you're not, just give the microphone. Right? Just give the microphone. You know, just like, hey, read it. I need to see you read yeah. One to go. Let's go. The third reason why people get discouraged is comparison. It says, all of a sudden, you begin to compare. How many of you have felt upset after seeing someone's post on Instagram? That there was a pastor that was my friend. I called him and I said, you know what? I'm going to follow you. And he said, why? He said, what did I post? I said, you didn't post anything wrong. But what you post distorts my spirit. Because I just find myself jumping into a competitive stage. Because it was just, it was a season in my life I feel as if some things were not happening. And they were just always posting about how God is blessing them. And how God is doing this and how God is doing that. I said, before this guy injures, injures my soul. See what, see, what, see what Elijah said. Elijah said, I'm not better than them. Have you noticed that you never had the problem that you were single until your best friend and the other one got married? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, glory to God. You never thought that your life was not moving forward until all your friends flew first class and posted pictures. How they were Maldives and Dubai and you couldn't even go to Ghana. And the simple reason is not what the post said. Is that deep down in your heart, you just began to compare. Because in your mind, no, no, no. She can't have that. I'm qualified for that more than her. I work more. I stay working more. How does she have that? And many of you will sink into depression because of comparison. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says it this way. They that compare themselves with themselves are fools. Idiots. Stupid. That's what the Bible says. You know what I hate about comparison? The feeling it gives me that I'm inferior. That's why I don't compare. The feeling that it makes me... And, and so, let me tell you what, how I deal with comparison. I always tell myself, God has no favorite. That's the first thing. Then the second thing I tell myself is this. Everybody cannot be first in everything. Everybody will be first in their area of callings and giftings. So, I, that makes me rest in what I do. I'm not good at some things. I'm not good at singing. Have you noticed that? Come on. Have you noticed that? I'm never good at dancing. I mean, I, I'm trying a lot better right now. Have you noticed that? <laughs> but when it comes to teaching this Bible, <laughs> come when it comes to like, come, let's try. Like when it comes to let's understand the etymology of scriptures. Come, 
which of the subjects do you want to start with? Is it Christology or Soteriology? Eschatology or Echisology? Let's start. Because I know my area. I know my area. You know the problem with you? A fish will struggle out of water because that's not his area. The only reason why you're struggling is that you're comparing yourself in a place that's not your area. Some of you are struggling. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Some of you are struggling because it's not your area. I know my area. I'm okay. I've settled with it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Verse 5. Let's look at Let's keep going. So, so, so how do I deal with comparison? So, when there's comparison, I rest in my grace. That's how I deal with it. When there's comparison, what do I do? I rest in my grace. Sometimes I see, I see people, you know, I just rest in my grace. You know, the other day I was watching a pastor from beginning to the end, the way he was screaming, when I screaming, when I screaming, but like, like just using words, boom, ah, I'm like, hey, Jesus Christ, see how this guy talks. But I thank God I'm not that person. I rest in my grace. I speak, I do one example, the whole blog speaks it up. So I won't be like, oh my God, nobody extends Bible like this. That's my grace. So if you want to compete with me, come to my field. Because that's where I'll beat you. Because I have what home advantage. Glory to God. I said glory to God. You know, when people listen to me, this is what I always hear them say. You make me love the Bible. You make the Bible so interesting. You, my mind has changed. People always say, my mind has changed. My life has changed. I cannot, I've not been in... Let, let's do this survey. How many of you were not consistent... In any church, you didn't stop going to church. Church was not interesting to you until you came here. Hands up. Look, almost thirty percent of the people. So now says, "I said, come here." Hey, I love church now. Um, a lady I spoke to, one one of the most successful Nigerian women, and someone wanted me to speak with her, and I spoke with her, wanted me to pray for her, and she said. It's finally nice to talk to you. He said, before they even told me that you, um, I should contact you, I'd actually watch a message of yours in the US. I watched it online and I was in tears. I said, oh, wow, how did they get it? He said, that I'm not fascinated by all the younger pastors because, you know, I belong to the older generation. He said, but all the young people, when I say young people in their 30s or 40s, have been trying to get close to God. All of them post your prayer and post your messages. So, he said, I asked myself, who is this person they post? Let me listen to what he said that others can't get them to listen to. But the key thing is, it's, that's my grace. I just need to enjoy it. But the moment I want to, I want to begin to become a singer, like some other pastor that sings, I'm going to see this grace. <laughs> stay in your grace. Some of your grace is career. Stay in the career. Your grace is business. Stay in business. Your grace is connection. Stay in connection. Your grace is immigration. Immigrate. <laughs> but don't stay in Canada and feel as if you're in Nigeria, you suffer. Never. We are in our grace. We will do just as well as someone that is in his grace abroad. <laughs> Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. The next thing is this verse 5. The Bible says, And he looked, and the cake was baked on the coal, and a cruise of water had his head. And he did eat and drink, and lay down again, and he slept. And then you touched him, and he did, I'm just jumping, and his journey is so good. Arise and eat. I love this. Because sometimes discouragement comes because of a lack of rest and renewal. There's nothing wrong. You just need rest. Especially ladies. Yeah, the one that's cooking. When you're in your parents' house, you cook. When you're married, you cook. You just need some time for yourself. I've noticed in my life when I become grumpy, it's because I'm tired. It's because I'm discouraged somewhere. 
Sometimes you just have to go away for one week and renew. Just imagine Elijah had a big problem and the angelic response was to be cooking food. God is amazing. Like Elijah had a big problem and angel said, go to suicide station, buy him food, come back. And Gabriel said, um, Lord, another thing to help him. He said, no, just be buying him food. So they brought the first food, he ate it and slept. God woke up and said, go and buy him more food and bring him back. And he went, brought him, he said, what about this problem? Don't talk to him about anything. Just be feeding him. Let him eat and what? And sleep. Some of you just need to sleep and eat. Who knows what I'm talking about? You don't have to sleep and eat. You're, you're too stressed. And this morning you're agitated, you're discouraged. You, you just need to rest. Just sleep and eat. Just sleep and eat. Just sleep and eat. If your friend said, but I thought you were broke, you said, if I say I'm broke, I was broke for you, I'm not broke for me. <laughs> and the reason why I said, let me tell you why I said this, because one of the bad things about my upbringing is the fact that I was not taught to rest. Either for my spiritual leaders, or for my natural parents, I was taught as if resting was a bad thing. So even when I'm resting, I and I catch myself resting, I feel, mm, I should not be resting. But ladies and gentlemen, I rest. So sometimes when you say, Pastor, I need to say, I say, I don't have the time right now, and you get upset. It's okay, you can be upset. It's okay. I can't change how you feel. All I know that if I die, you look for another pastor. And you now say, and it was a good pastor. Yes or no? Yes. But my children cannot look for another father. Glory to God. The other thing that causes depression. So, what causes depression? The lack of renewal. Lack of renewal. Let me tell you something. Some of you, you've not had eight hours sleep in a long time. This is practical now. What does you do? Eat good food. You've not eaten sleep in a long time. Every time I just woke up at 4 a.m., I'm going to walk. Just calm down. Just rest. Just go to Black Bell, have a nice meal. Go to Cactus, have a nice meal. Someone says it costs money. Okay, go to your size, have a last nice meal. <laughs> if you're a married man, tell your wife, don't cook for today. Let's just go out and sit down and have a nice meal. Is Lord speaking to the husbands? Women, is Lord speaking to the husbands? I know. And the last thing, that, I mean, not the last thing, but the last I can share is this. Maybe two more, but I'll just close. Verse 9. The Bible says this. <laughs> verse 9, verse 9, verse 9. The Bible says, and they came into the cave and lodged there. And this is why people get into the discouragement. Because they go, they begin to isolate themselves. Just for you to know, isolation, be, pre, sorry, isolation pre, precedes destruction. When a lion wants to attack his prey, you know what a lion does? The lion will observe and see which of the animals is lagging behind. That's the one it goes for. So, when the devil wants to attack people, it's looking for who is lagging behind. Who has stopped going to church? Who is just going to church? And they say, oh yeah, strike! Strike! So, because you had a breakup, you stop coming to church. You are, you are heading for destruction. Isolation. Someone says, I have not seen in church. No, I say, I'm trying to regroup. That's so funny. Because can you, can you regroup without being in a group? The word is regroup. There must be a group for you to what? Regroup. Isolation. Let me tell you something. Can I say this to you? Everybody pay attention. When you feel you need space the most is when you need people the most. Write it down somewhere. When you feel you need space the most is when you need people the most. Because the natural human tendency is to pull away and pull away for destruction but the God's tendency is to surround you with people that will help you. You've gone through a terrible loss a divorce or heartbreak some kind of career disappointment some kind of approval issue some kind of loss that's where you need people the most. That's where you need to find good people around you. People of faith. 
Because when you feel the need to pull away the most, that's when you need people the most. And the last thing that happened, I mean not the last thing, but I can say this quickly. God told him, he said, go to the mount, I will talk to you. How does, how does, how does, <laughs> God says, go to the mount, I will talk to you. Sometimes we get into this discouraged because we forget the revelation. So God takes us to a place where he brings us a renewed revelation. And that's why Isaiah said, they that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. Sometimes when you're discouraged, there's the best posture. You get on your knees, hands on the floor, and say, I'm here. I'm here, Lord. I need to hear differently. I need to see differently. It's here, Lord. I feel tired. I feel weak. I feel overwhelmed. I don't know why 22 did not go the right way. My emotions are boiling. Satan says, I should just forget you. But I'm here because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with strength with wings as eagle. They shall run and they shall not be weary. I feel weary. That's why I'm here. I'm here, Lord. I'm here, Lord. I'm here, Lord. Because you're waiting for a renewed word. You're waiting for something. You're waiting for something. You're waiting for a catch-up moment. You're waiting for a tip point. Oh, oh Lord, I'm here. I'm here, Lord. I'm here. I've been through this loss in business. I'm here, Lord. Holy Ghost, I'm here. Why? Because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The question to you is this. When was the last time you had that posture? The strength in God. The Bible says everyone that appears in Zion shall go from strength to strength. The strength in God. But when was the last time that you tapped into strength? You speak to your friends. You go and say therapists. But the strength in God. They that wait upon the Lord. Listen to me. The people that stand in the day, kneel at night. The strength to stand in the day is found at night. Here. We will wait upon the Lord. 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 They may not understand, but we will wait upon the Lord. They may wonder what are you doing about the loss, but we will wait upon the Lord. They wonder what are you doing after the divorce, but we will wait upon the Lord. They wonder what are you doing after the breakup. We will wait upon the Lord. They wonder which all the doctors have said, what are you doing? We will wait upon the Lord. We know where our power is. We know our strength is. We know where to push in. We know where to stay. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You need some new renew, some renewal. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew. And some some of you, your needs, your needs needs to touch the floor. It's been too long. It's been too long. Your knees need to touch the floor. You're falling into the psychedelic, contemporary walk of Christianity that is so into front and style. Your knees need to go to the place of the back room where God bends people, bold people, breaks people, and push fresh fire into your soul. Shall we pray?